So our first speaker today is Dr. John Wallace from the University of Pittsburgh. I asked if there was a laser point, I'm supposed to be brief and brilliant, but I can at least be brief. <laughs> I have 10 seconds in. Good morning. Good to see you this morning. Uh, I dream, that's what we're supposed to be. I dream a world where race does not define one's experience of the American dream. About three weeks ago, I was talking to a guy, his, uh, he was telling me the story about his grandfather and how he had immigrated to the United States from Italy. And he didn't know the language and, you know, the whole deal, bootstraps and all of that. And so he got a job at the United States Steel. And at U.S. Steel, he became a foreman. And there, you know, get promoted, all the things happened. And then now his grandson lives in Upper St. Clair, which is probably one of the most affluent suburbs in the city of Pittsburgh. This is a picture of my grandfather and the beautiful baby that he's holding is me. <laughs> My grandfather, his father, Marshall Gross, was a slave. My grandfather, like the gentleman I spoke to, also worked at U.S. Steel. In fact, he worked at U.S. Steel for 42 years. He was told, Ralph, you're a great worker. And if you weren't a Negro, I could make you a foreman. But here at United States Steel, we can't have black men giving white men instruction. And so all that goes with being employed and promoted and raises and then the eighth wonder of the world, which we all know is what compound interest and buying a better home and all of those things that happen could not happen for my grandfather because he was black. Now I'm going to ask you to multitask and read a little bit and listen to me at the same time. <laughs> I dream a world where race and racism is understood as a mega challenge of social work, much like the elephant talking to his therapist. <laughs> I'm right here in the room, and no one even acknowledges me. So I ask myself, where is race in the grand challenges? And so what I did was I took the text from each of the policy papers, I combined them into a single document. I loaded them into Wordle, and Wordle, as you know, takes the text, and it will make the size of the word based on its frequency. And so the question was, where is race in the 11,147 words that comprise those documents? And race and racial showed up 16 times, or .0001 of the text. Or where is race in the grand challenges? It's actually right there, the little small word in the corner. I dream a world where there's not racial disparities in all 12 of the grand challenges. Show you a little data. I dream a world where African-American children are twice as likely as white children to die as infants because we're concerned about healthy outcomes with children. I dream a world where there are no race gaps in the leading causes of death because we want to close the gaps in health. And the leading causes, which include heart disease, cancer, homicide, diabetes, those are the causes where we find the largest disparities by race. I dream a world where African Americans' lives would be as long and as productive as white Americans. We still live four or five years less, and for black men, it's even more than our white colleagues. I dream a world where African-American seniors are not socially isolated. So if you look at the top row, African-American women, African-American men, white women, white men, 25% of African-American women asked about their social space where they live independently. A quarter of them indicate that they are limited to the room where they sleep. I dream a world where African-Americans are only 13% of the population, but 40% of the homeless population. I dream a world where we're not overrepresented in homelessness. I dream a world where race is not the most significant predictor of living in a toxic environment, not having clean water, living near waste. I dream a world where African American wealth is not six and a half times less that of white Americans, or translated into dollars, $700,000. A world where African-Americans' income would not have declined over the past 16 years. 
So 2014, 2016, I'm sorry, our income, $39,490 is actually less than it was in 2000 when it was $41,363. Not to mention that it is over $20,000 less than our white American colleagues. I dream a world where African Americans are not 30% less likely to own an asset like a home. If we roll back to our grandparents, one Italian immigrant from Italy, mine from uh, Talladega, Alabama, whose father was a slave. I looked at the price of the home that my grandparents lived in that I actually have the deed. They paid about $12,000 for that home in 1956. That same home in 2014 is worth $12,000. When grandpa's Italian grandpa African American dies, the real estate that they live in is their primary investment. Neither of them was an investor and all of that, but the property value of their homes, and let's just an estimate one being $200,000, one being $12,000, that gap is what goes into education, what goes into business startup, which goes into the down payment for the next home, and on and on and on. I dream of a world where African Americans have equal access to and use of technology to benefit their health. Doctors don't assign the technologies to monitor people's health as frequently, don't have access to technology, don't use the technology for research on health conditions and so forth. I dream a world where African Americans are not six times more likely to be incarcerated, where one in three of black men will be arrested. There's only two of us in here. The other one is probably locked up. <laughs> I dream a world where I'm not mistaken as tech supporters were. In 2016, after completing my talk, I took this picture of myself. <laughs> and I don't look real happy because I'm not. Because as I was leaving, one of my white female colleagues comes in the room and says, oh good, are you here to help me set up my PowerPoint? And so the reason I took my picture of myself because this right here is my sleigh suit. And my money tie. I looked good. And the reason that I existed in the mind of my white female social worker colleague was to help her set up her PowerPoint. And my response was, no, I'm not here to help you set up your PowerPoint. But I will. But in my mind, I was like... For real though? <laughs> I dream a world where we work together to achieve equal opportunity, equity, and justice. My question for you is, are you up for the challenge? <laughs> Eight minutes. Thank you very much.